It was not business as usual at the restaurant when Bart's, a black army veteran, was pushed out of the way by Jessica who wanted to cut the line. When he tried to protest it, she mocked and insulted him. However, when he said something, she instantly regretted it. The restaurant was enjoying a cool day. It was just after the lunch rush, and the high influx of customers had reduced to a moderate level. Bart, a black army veteran, stood at the counter as he engaged the cashier in a mild conversation. He was an easygoing man who had a cute smile, and as he spoke to the cashier, she smiled warmly at him. He was dressed in simple clothes and he wore his camouflage cap, a tribute to his days in the army. As he kept talking to the cashier, he was suddenly elbowed out of the way. He let out a sharp cry as he was pushed hard. He staggered a bit, and he would have fallen hard to the ground if he had not grabbed the counter just in time. When he steadied himself, he saw that a woman had taken his place at the counter and was talking to the cashier. She rattled off her order and began to dig into her purse for her ATM card. Bart stared at her in shock. The cashier was also shocked at such a brazen attitude from the woman. For a few seconds, the woman continued as if she didn't know that she had just pushed a man who was clearly older than she was. When she finally found her ATM, she pulled it out and handed it to the stunned cashier who refused to take it. From where he stood, Bart could see that her name was Jessica and he could tell that she was pointedly ignoring him. Jessica held out the cards to the cashier for about 30 seconds, but the cashier didn't take it. It was her form of protest against what she had just done to Bart. Letting out a sigh, Jessica waved her hand half-heartedly at Bart, though it was a vague gesture. Bart couldn't tell if she was pretending to apologize or just making a random gesture. Either way, he was angry about her behavior. He had been at the counter before her, and she had no right to push him aside like that. He walked closer to Jessica and demanded to know why she had pushed him, insisting she should have just waited her turn. Before he could finish, Jessica raised a finger and told him to keep quiet. She explained she was in a hurry, because she had an important meeting to attend. That urgency prompted her actions. She wanted to grab a quick bite, and he had been in her way. He might have time to waste, but she didn't, and she did what she felt she had to do. Bart told her that being in a hurry didn't give her the right to push people around. He pointed out that she could have got him injured or caused even worse harm with the way she pushed him. If he hadn't managed to steady himself, he could have fallen badly. He then demanded an apology from her, saying it was the least she could do after treating him so horribly. Jessica wasn't having it though. She immediately lost her temper. She told him that she was in a hurry and didn't have time for chit-chat. She had better things to do with her time and none of them included speaking to an old man. She didn't stop there. Jessica went on to tell Bart that she knew he was only there to beg. There was no way he could afford to eat in an expensive restaurant such as that. She was certain that he wasn't making any orders. She then called him a dark-skinned beggar and said that she couldn't be bothered by the likes of him. Bart was shocked into silence by the venom and hate that filled her words. He couldn't understand how one person could be so mean to a stranger. He told her that she was insulting him without provocation and it wasn't right. He also reminded her that she had no idea who he was and that making assumptions about him based on the color of his skin showed how prejudiced she was. Jessica laughed out loud. She stepped closer to Bart until she was almost in his face and then she yelled at him that she would prove that he was a beggar. She suddenly turned to the cashier and asked her what Bart's order was. Bart turned to the cashier who hesitated a little. She looked at the veteran and then with downcast eyes confessed that he had not been making any order. The cashier was about to continue speaking when Jessica interrupted her with a whoop of joy. She did it so loudly that it seemed like she had just won the lottery. Jessica boasted about her ability to spot beggars from afar, claiming Bart fit the description perfectly. According to her, he was black, old and poor. Worst of all, he was wearing cheap knockoff clothes that highlighted his poverty. Her prejudice was clear as she insisted that black people couldn't afford to eat at exclusive restaurants. She was sure that they were there to beg or steal. Bart was deeply insulted by her words. He told her that during his time as a soldier, he had been one of the most decorated and she had no right calling him a beggar or accusing him of stealing. Jessica only laughed at him once more, and then she said it didn't matter if he was a veteran. Blacks were all the same. That's how it was. And that's how it always be because nothing he could do would change her mind. Jessica chuckled at the man and declared that she was finished dealing with his kind. In her view, he was far beneath her. She considered herself vastly more important. 
Her confidence stemmed from her eventful past in the hospitality industry. Jessica had a diverse career that included managing an exclusive hotel and later overseeing a fast food chain, where she successfully opened multiple branches nationwide. Her achievements were numerous and added accolades to her resume, making it highly attractive to potential employers. Despite her skills and accomplishments, Jessica was not in high demand. She struggled to last long in any position due to constant complaints from both staff and customers about her rude and overbearing behavior. She was mean to her subordinates, constantly putting them down, and treated customers poorly if she deemed them unfit to patronize the establishment. At one hotel, a colleague sued the company, citing a toxic work environment created by Jessica. The colleague won the lawsuit, costing the company significant money and damages, which led to Jessica's dismissal. The incident marked by the beginning of a series of similar outcomes. She moved from company to company, working in hotels, restaurants, clubs, and fast food establishments. The last time she was fired was a year ago, and by then her reputation had spread far and wide among key players in the hospitality industry. They all knew that Jessica was a red flag and no one was willing to employ her because they knew it could affect their business in the long run. No one was willing to take that risk. At one point, she became convinced that she would never be able to get another job. No matter how many resumes she put out or how hard she worked in preparations for her interviews, her emails were never replied to. Once they saw her name, they already knew everything they needed to know about her. Despite everything that was happening to her, Jessica never believed for once that it was all her fault. She never saw anything wrong in the way she treated people despite making them all want to stay away from her. In her mind, she was sure that she was doing the right thing and it was the others who had to understand her. They were the ones who refused to come to her level as she was way above their class. She was sure that they were all jealous of her and they were envious of all she had achieved. Not once did she ever apologize for her actions, not even when she was faced with the threat of losing her job. Her strong-headedness became her undoing. Despite being good at her job, her rude and discriminatory nature ruined so many things for her. It denied her opportunities that would have skyrocketed her career to the moon, which was why, for more than a year, she was left searching for jobs and constantly getting rejected. However, just when she thought all hope was lost, she finally got a response to an email. She came across an ad for a high-end restaurant seeking a new manager, and upon reviewing the listed requirements, she realized she possessed every single qualification making her a perfect fit for the position. She decided to apply for the job. She did it with mixed feelings because she suspected that it would be ignored, just like every other email she had sent over the past year. Thankfully, within two weeks, she got a response via email. The recruiting manager invited her to an interview where they would make sure that she was the right fit for the job. Jessica prepared hard for the interview. She drafted out plans that she was sure would take the restaurant to the top of the ladder. She also researched to get statistics on their sales, so she could pitch in ideas that would move the restaurant forward. The night before the interview, she had everything she needed ready, and she was sure that with everything she had gathered, she would be able to dazzle whoever was interviewing her. She came to the restaurant about 30 minutes before the allotted time, and she was ready for the meeting. She had gone to take a seat, hoping to go over the notes she had made. By the time she was done, she realized that she was hungry. She decided that it would be a good idea to grab a quiet bite before her interview commenced. She didn't want to face her would-be employer on an empty stomach. In her hurry to get her meal, she pushed Bart out of the way and it escalated into a full-on argument. Now, as she stared at Bart, she felt disgust well up inside her. All she could think of was that once she became the manager of the restaurant, she would make a policy that banned blacks from ever stepping foot into the restaurant. Jessica didn't keep this thought to herself. She told Bart, causing him to gasp in shock. The cashier was just as shocked that Jessica could say such a thing. However, she seemed to be on a roll and there was nothing that could stop her. She said that if she had her way, he wouldn't even be allowed to walk the streets. The fact that he was a veteran didn't mean anything to her. She even called this army cap fake, just like his clothes. Not long after, she checked her time and saw that it was almost time for her interview. She told the cashier that she wasn't interested in buying a meal anymore because she had to get to an important meeting. She returned to her seat to wait, going over the finishing touches in her plans. Bart remained there, his eyes following her every movement. Jessica remained there for a few minutes before checking the time once more. Her interviewer was yet to turn up. She got back to her feet and made her way back to the counter. She ignored Bart and told the cashier to inform the boss that she was around because she had an appointment with him. She ordered the cashier to treat it as an emergency because it was an urgent meeting. 
The cashier was puzzled as she stared at Jessica. For a moment, Jessica even thought she had grown horns on her head. She had to repeat her request to the cashier before the young lady finally made her move. She didn't move from the spot, but she slowly and gingerly raised her hand and then pointed her finger at Bart. Bart was the boss. He was the one that Jessica was there to see. Jessica was shocked to her bones. She was so shocked that her mouth fell open. She staggered backward, refusing to believe her eyes as a smug smile spread over the veteran's face. She refused to believe that Bart owned the restaurant. She refused to believe that the man she had been mocking all through was the one who was supposed to employ her. Bart patiently waited for her until she calmed down, and he told her a riveting story. The restaurant was Bart and his wife's brainchild. They built it with the money he had saved up from his time in the army. It was a good thing for them because it kept them busy and also paid the bills so they didn't have to rely on the government for their monthly pensions. However, things had gone even better than they had hoped. What was supposed to be something to keep them busy morphed into a big and much sought after restaurant. Everyone loved their meals and how the staff was easy to relate to. They were able to grow the restaurant into something decent. Sadly, tragedy struck when things were getting interesting. Bart's wife fell ill. It was a short and deadly battle, and she didn't survive it. Losing her was one of the hardest things in the world for Bart, and it shook him to his very core. The only way he could rise above the pain was pouring himself into work. He gave everything he had to the restaurant and was able to improve it even further. Soon, the restaurant became one of the most expensive ones in the city. However, as time passed, he began to get too old to run such a major business. It even began to take a toll on his health. Bart didn't want to spend his final days running a business. He wanted to spend it doing something that he loved and that was traveling. He wanted to travel to as many countries as he could before he passed on to be with his wife. To be able to do that though, he had to hire a new manager. Someone who could handle the restaurant and take it where Bart wanted it to be. Bart told Jessica that he had been impressed by her resume, especially when everyone said that she was good. The same people also told him about how toxic she was, but he refused to let that sway his decision. He wanted to give her the benefit of the doubts, which was why he invited her for the interview, even when other restaurants refused to give her a chance. Sadly, she had disappointed him. He was not even at the counter to order food. The cashier was right about that. He had come there to tell her to keep an eye on Jessica. That was what he was telling the cashier when he got elbowed out of the way and almost thrown to the floor. He then looked into her eyes as he said to her, You will never get a job here, Jessica. At once, Jessica began to beg. She couldn't believe that she had yet again lost another job due to how rude she was. She regretted her actions as she clasped her hands in plea. She couldn't bear to go another year without a job. Her savings were running out and she had nothing she could survive on. She needed the job. She dropped to her knees as she apologized to Bart for mocking and insulting him. She swore that she would do better and she would do anything to make things right with him. Bart refused her. He had already seen her true colors. He knew that she held biases against blacks. As a black man and someone who stood for fairness, putting such a person in charge of his business would go against everything he stood for. He told her that if only she had not been rude to him, if only she was a nice woman, things would never have gotten so bad for her. Later on, when she refused to leave the premises and kept begging Bart to reconsider, he called security and had them throw her out of his restaurant. That night, as she replayed everything in her head, she could pinpoint exactly where everything went wrong for her and how she could have done things differently. She was filled with regret and swore that she would never let her bad character ruin her opportunities ever again. She tried getting other jobs, but none of them were forthcoming. No one was willing to touch her, even with a 10-foot pole. In the end, she was forced to seek jobs in less popular establishments. Not long after, she got a job as a waiter in a rundown restaurant at the edge of the town. It was a real fall from grace for Jessica, but she had learned her lesson and she was willing to do her best to be a good person from then on. Later on, Bart found someone good enough to run the restaurant for him, and he was finally able to go on the trip. He could finally leave the reins for someone else. It was a huge relief for him. What a beautiful story. What would you have done in Bart's shoes? Would you have hired Jessica? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.